sequel after 37 years and nearly 9,000 episodes, it might be time, sadly, to throw a farewell street party for our favourite neighbours. Neighbour, everybody needs good neighbours With a little understanding You can find the perfect blend UK broadcasting station Channel 5 announced they'll screen the final show in August of this year as they won't be renewing their contract with Fremantle, which is the Australian producers of the show. Now this means the end to an iconic cultural phenomena which has launched the careers of many Australian actors, directors, producers and writers. And among them is Philippa Byrne, former staff writer on the show and also a screenwriting lecturer at Victorian College of Arts at the University. University of Melbourne. Welcome to the show, Philippa. Hello, morning. <laughs> I have always <laughs> wanted to ask this, where do you get the ideas for a neighbour's storyline? Like, do you just dream it up or do, or do you get fans to send in ideas? Sometimes fans, sometimes the actors, but there was always a team or there is always a team of about four or five people that sit there and just have amazing, crazy conversations, and the craziest ideas often come up with the best stories. But also, I have to say, my friends started telling me they would never tell me what was going on in their lives because it would end up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you were on Neighbours for quite some time and you were involved in some of the dramatic storylines as well. <laughs> Among them is one that we're about to show. I believe this is Madge's Farewell. Madge's Farewell. <laughs> Ah, oh, indeed, Madge's death there. Philippa, talk us through the idea or the brainstorming behind that storyline. Yeah, it still, it still brings tears to my eyes, actually, to watch that, I have to say. Um, well, the producers came in and said that we were, they were, the contract was ending for the actor, so we yeah. were allowed to kill her off, which is a huge day for a writing team. We were very excited. And, um, and we were given a sort of timeline of how that had, hap had to happen, so we had to think of how her death would happen that would fit into that timeline. So we did that, lots of medical research, and then we wrote it, and then we thought that's all good. And then when we saw the tapes come back from the studio, we were just all sitting there crying our eyes out. Yeah. It, was, it was really emotional. And I think, um, you know, we were really affected by it because we get so close to the characters because we're writing them. And then many, many years later, when I was actually overseas, I ran into someone, someone I'd never met before, and when I mentioned that I'd been involved in writing Madge's death, she said to me, oh, that woman was like a grandmother to me. And she burst into tears mm -hmm. and walked away. Well, that was, well that, that's the thing, isn't it? Neighbours isn't just a cultural icon, mm -hmm. uh, a, a career launching pad for many people, but it really became the sort of series where everybody talks about it, everybody could relate to a particular mm -hmm. character. Why do you think it was so popular? I think it's so popular because it is, A, it's five nights a week, so people are very connected to it. It's very present in people's lives. Mm -hmm. But I think also just the fact that it had such a balance of comedy stories, of drama stories, of romance stories, and and it's at its heart, it's actually very kind-hearted and people mm -hmm. find their way out of their troubles and they're very relatable troubles, apart from the many episodes of Amnesia. But, um, you know, it's it's a very relatable show and I think people live with it for their whole life often. So, so they become very involved with the characters. And, of course, um, actors, directors, producers, script writers all cut their teeth on this amazing show and they go on to do amazing things as well. Mm, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things, especially with the actors and with the writers, is that you're just... You're just producing so many hours of content a week that you can't be precious about it. You have to be very professional. 
you have to support the people around you. And I think the people that come through Neighbours just have, they have incredible skills and craft, but they also don't have kind of diva attitude. And I think that makes them very good to work with when they go on to other things. So if there is foreclosure, unfortunately, on the homes of Ramsey Street, what does that then mean for, um, you know, the Australian film and TV industry? What does it mean for Australia? It's. I think it's going to be a big, a big change in the in the industry because it's such a training ground for people behind the scenes as well as for actors. I mean, so many writers and directors and producers and all departments. So many people have sort of learnt their trade on Neighbours, and it's Fremantle has a real thing about being a training ground. So they often give people their first break. And I think that's really, really important. So I think that'll be a major loss. And just the sheer number of jobs, the sheer number of people it employs in a shrinking industry is, um, well, not shrinking industry, but there's a shrinking thing for writers and stuff because we might be having a lot shot here, but a lot is not being written here. A lot of stuff is now American productions. So Neighbours will be a big loss. It will be very sad to say goodbye mm -hmm. to Neighbours. Uh, Philippa, thank mm -hmm. you so much for being with us today and sharing your memories of being on <laughs> Neighbours with us. Philippa Byrne, their former staff writer on that iconic show, Neighbours. Mm -hmm.